Hello, my name is Nicole Hegarty and I am presenting my course project regarding anxiety disorders. Where do anxiety disorders come from? In the past, people didn't understand anxiety disorders. They thought that these people were crazy, that the problem was all in their head. Today we know that anxiety disorders are real. They are medical conditions caused by overactivity in the amygdala. If you look at the image below, you'll see that I have put an image of the brain on the screen. It has a red highlighted portion labeled the amygdala. That will be the part of the brain I will be talking about for the purposes of this project. Now that you understand where anxiety disorders come from, let's talk about how common they are. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in the United States. 18% of adults in the United States suffer from an anxiety disorder. That may not sound like a lot, but that percentage equals 40 million people. Although anxiety disorders are highly treatable, only a third of the adults in the United States who suffer from these disorders actually receive treatment. If you look at the image below, you can see the comparison between a healthy brain and the brain of a person suffering from anxiety. The red shows the excess activity happening in the back of the brain. This scan proves that anxiety disorders are a medical condition caused by excess activity in the amygdala, which I showed on the previous screen. Let's continue learning about how anxiety disorders develop in the brain. Anxiety disorders can develop for a lot of different reasons. The most common cause is genetic. Other causes include life events, medical conditions, medications, substance abuse, and withdrawal symptoms. If you change your brain chemistry from medications or substance abuse, you change the way that your amygdala can process information. However, you can also develop an anxiety disorder from traumatic events. PTSD is a good example of this. PTSD is a type of anxiety disorder that develops after trauma. Some examples of this are war, rape, and car accidents. Your amygdala processes memory and fear. Your brain is wired to recall bad experience better than good experiences. Because of this, when trauma happens, your amygdala becomes hyperactive. From there, let's move on to triggers. Triggers for panic attacks can be caused by many different things. Anxiety is a very personal type of mental illness. Every person who suffers from an anxiety disorder will have their own triggers based on their personality and based on what the cause of their anxiety is. PTSD versus genetics, as an example, those people would have very different triggers. Possible triggers are injury, illness, conflict, loss, use of stimulants such as caffeine, certain settings such as the doctor's office. Anything that can cause someone to feel stress can cause a panic attack. Because your amygdala processes fear, when you feel stressed, your amygdala becomes hyperactive. However, for someone who suffers from an anxiety disorder, their amygdala is already hyperactive. That is why a panic attack happens. That's also explained why stimulants like caffeine can also cause panic attacks. Although understanding triggers is important, let's learn about treatment. How to treat. Anxiety disorders are primarily treated with both medications and therapy. It is important to work with your doctor. It may take time to find the right medication with the right dosage. It also may take time to find the right therapist or type of therapy that works for you. It is important to remember that an anxiety disorder is a very personal type of mental illness. Everyone who suffers from these disorders is different. Your triggers are different and therefore your treatment will be different. It is important to keep the lines of communication open with those around you, especially with your doctor or therapist. Your treatment will depend on your anxiety cause. For example, if your anxiety is caused by genetics, medication will most likely be prescribed as your main course for treatment. However, if you suffer from PTSD, then therapy will most likely be your main course of treatment. Although it is true, that you will most likely have either medication or therapy as your main course of treatment, it is highly possible that your doctor or therapist will recommend both medication and therapy as treatment. Regardless of where your anxiety disorder come from, comes from, will determine the main course for treatment. But even if you have a genetic type of anxiety disorder, you will most likely still be put in therapy or recommended for therapy because Having a disorder like this, a mental illness, can cause someone to feel inadequate and in various negative emotions like that. And because of that, your doctor or therapist would usually recommend both medication and therapy.
They work together. Here is my APA cited references slide. This is the information that I used for our course project. I also made a separate APA cited references slide for the photos that I used to help me explain the information. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Have a good day.